Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me hear you say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For he's worthy of our praise. Amen. Let's enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Don't hold nothing back because he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. Amen. Uh, Holy Spirit truly is here because we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Truly, we know that he's here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, if we know he's here, then we should worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if we know he's here, we should give him all the reverence he's due. Amen. amen. Uh, <laughs> Y'all know what amen mean, right? <laughs> it means I agree. So if you say I agree, then you're going to enter his gates with all the praise and all the worship that you possibly can give our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, truly we know that you are here. Because we serve a risen Savior that's in this world today. We don't have to wait until next Sunday to worship you in spirit and in truth. Because we know you are a resurrected Savior and that you are in this world today. Father, we know that we sing that song. We serve a risen Savior that's in this world today. We know that you are living no matter what men may say. We see your hand of mercy we hear your voice of cheer. And every time we need you, Lord, you're always here. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in us to us. Knowing that we are entering your gates. Entering your gates. Not man's gate. Not Pastor Fabian's gates. Not the bishop's gates. Not the pope's gates. But the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's gates. That's who we come to worship, Lord. Now, Lord, with all that said, let Holy Spirit speak to our hearts.
keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know Adults, you can, if you will, turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. I'll be reading from the NIV, I mean, King James translation today. It says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, because they asked how we should pray. He said, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, truly you are an awesome, almighty God. 
Have your way, Holy Spirit. Use me for your glory and your honor. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. But there's something about the name Jehovah. The purpose of prayer, and I need you to understand this, is because a lot of times when we pray, we don't pray specifically for the right things. And sometimes we don't pray the right way. Even those who had prayed, I'm sure, before they asked Jesus, how should we pray? And Jesus took them, took them to this particular way of praying. I'm sure they prayed a certain prayer, but they wanted to be more accurate and more powerful in their prayer life. But the purpose of prayer is to glorify God's name and to ask for help to accomplish his will on earth. I ain't getting no amens on that. Because uh, some of you, you allow the devil, because he knows scripture too, real quickly to say, you have not because you ask not. And then you think that that's the only time you should be asking for things when you pray. This prayer begins with God's interest, not ours. God's name, God's kingdom, God's will be done. Let's look at the rest of the verse. I, I want y'all to see the rest of this. Starting with verse 9 of chapter 6. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That's a one for us. That's, that's, that's one one for us. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Only one time, Holy Spirit say, you can ask for something you want. Because most people don't ask to be delivered from the evil one today. Most people don't pray thy kingdom come today because you say, well, I got so many things I want to do. I don't want heaven to come right now. Delay it a little while, Lord. But he said, pray thy kingdom come. Prayer is a powerful instrument. Not forgetting man's will done, but forgetting God's will done through us on earth. I wish I had a praying church this morning. We have no right to ask God for anything that will dishonor his name, delay his kingdom, uh -huh, or disturb his will on earth for his glory. I remember when I was first led to the Lord, it was all about evangelism for me, who I could speak to about Jesus. Whether, wherever I went, I spoke to people about salvation. And I always ask this question, when was the last time somebody came to you and asked you, were you saved? There's a lot of Christians that are in your circle, that are in your employment, that are in your educational facilities, that do not come and ask you, because they don't know. They won't come and ask you, uh, where will you spend eternity if you left this world today? And unfortunately, there's a lot of Christians that don't know the gospel. You say, you, do, do, do y'all preach the gospel in your church? And the first thing they'll say, yeah, we sing, we sing songs by Kurt Franklin because they think that's the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The gospel is the salvation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, believeth in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's funny how so many Christians don't even know how to give the gospel. They'll say, well, you, you just come to my church. My pastor always talking about salvation. No, they may not make it to church. You know what the will of the Lord is? I'm going to tell you what the will of the Lord is. That all men be saved. That's the will 
of the Father. Can I preach to you this afternoon? Too many times the prayers that go before God are prayers that are about the person praying instead of the person of Holy Spirit living in the believers. It's important to remember who is interceding on the behalf of all humanity. Christ in us is interceding for this world. We are mighty men and women of God. But we come as if we still want to touch the hem of Jesus' garment when you are in the garment of Jesus. And that he can touch, he can, you can be used to heal many. This afternoon, the name Jehovah is the message Holy Spirit wants us to hear this afternoon. So the title of this morning, this afternoon's message is Jehovah. Turn to Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6. And it's, it's a shame that when Elder Tanja be teaching in her class, we're in Exodus. And I be wanting to say a bunch of stuff about the message while she's teaching. But I don't, I don't go above Holy Spirit. I, I, I come in here in submission. I come in here to listen and not teach the class. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, King James says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, and the Lord is spelled all caps here. Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall, be, uh, shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, all caps. That's important. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. That's not Jehovah. Uh -huh. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Woo! See, a lot of people miss that right there. He said, I am the Lord Almighty. That's what my people know me by. But Jehovah, they don't know me by. Hmm. That's what he told Moses. He said, but you're gonna, they're going to get to know who Jehovah is. They're going to get to know how powerful Jehovah is. God command, God reminds Moses, I am the Lord, all caps, which is God's covenant name, Jehovah. If you want to write notes, the first thing I want you to see about Jehovah, because that's our first point, is that that is his covenant name. That's his contractual name. Oh, my God. Mm. If you understand a contract, a contract is binding. And God is saying, my name, Jehovah, is a binding name. Whatever I say, whenever you hear Jehovah, whenever you see the Lord all caps, a covenant is attached to that name. Oh, they, 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 y'all not there yet. <laughs> y'all not there yet. I'm trying to get you there. One way to get to know God better is to pay more attention to all his names and get an understanding of what all his names mean. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Jehovah is God's covenant name. I want you to say Jehovah is God's covenant name, meaning it's contractual. Let me hear you say meaning is contractual. God uses his covenant name, Jehovah, the Lord, to declare his promises to Moses. Right there, to declare his promises to Moses. Has God made you some promises? Has Jehovah made you some promises? Has the Lord made you some promises? In his word, whatever promise he has made to you, he must keep. When Jehovah declared to Moses, he told him, I am declaring this. This is what I'm going to do for the children of Israel. I will deliver them out of slavery, out of Egypt, by that name. Exodus 6, 1 through 8, God uses his covenant name, Jehovah the Lord, so many times. But this is interesting. Seven times through verse 6 and 8, through Exodus chapter 6, Jesus said, Jehovah, I'm sorry, he said, I will. Look at it, look at it. Chapter 6, verse 6 through 8. There it is. It says, wherefore say unto the children of Israel, 
Jehovah's talking to Moses. I am the Lord and I will, number one. There's number one. I underlined it in my Bible because seven is the perfect number. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Now, here's the number, the second one. And I will rid you out of their bondage. Number three, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgment. Uh, number four, and I will take you to me for a people and I will, uh, number five, be to you a God and ye shall know that I am the Lord, all caps. I am Jehovah, your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Number six, and I will bring you into a land concerning which I did swear. Uh, which I promised to give to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And number seven, I will give it to you for an inheritance. I am the Lord, all caps. I am Jehovah. That's my covenant name. And where my covenant name is attached, it's contractual. Uh, uh, can I get an amen? Uh, Jehovah, his covenant name declares his promises. Uh, it's not good for man to be alone. Someone might say, well, I'm not a man. I'm a woman. <laughs> You're a woman. man. And he said, it's not good for you to be alone. God will bring you a man in your life. And man, God will bring a woman to you in your life. And you don't have to go looking for him. You don't have to go looking for her. God will bring her. When we know that Jehovah is in control and we can claim his promises, we will experience peace and courage in the many battles of our lives. The patriarchs, here it is. The patriarchs, the ones before us, knew God as God Almighty, which in the Hebrew is El Shaddai, meaning all-sufficient and all-powerful God. And they knew that God's name was Jehovah. They knew that. They knew Yahweh was Jehovah. But they didn't understand the full implication of his name. This is what God was saying to Moses in verse 3 of chapter 6. He said, they don't understand the whole implication of my name. And some people today, mm -hmm, some people don't know the whole implication of Jesus' name. Yes, sure. They don't know the whole implication of his name, Emmanuel, God with us. They don't know the son of David is Jesus and don't know the implication of that name. I'm going through a healing right now. My body's going through a healing right now as I'm preaching. Uh huh. You know, they that, got a thing called pollen, right? Yeah. I'm, I, I have allergies. I've been praying almost a month since this pollen has come early and they say it's going to be late. Uh, somebody can identify with me on this. See, I used to take allergy shots. So God's healing me right now. He's bringing up some stuff out of me right now. So excuse me if uh, something gets come out of me. It ain't a demon. It's, <laughs> it's allergies. I thank you for the healing, Lord. <laughs> Some people don't even know the full implication of Jesus' name. That's a shame. You know, we were talking Tuesday. Somebody, I remember somebody was praying, and they got so involved into the prayer, and I guess they wanted to get a little religious, and they said, and we thank the prince of the air because he's mighty. Look, I said, the prince of the air is the devil. Why are you praying to the prince of the air? Because it sounded good. They don't read their Bibles. They don't know the full implication of God's name. <laughs> I'm sure God says, I'm going to have mercy on you, son, because I remember a man named Apollos went around preaching Jesus, but preaching Jesus the wrong way, and a Pr Priscilla and Aquila had to tell him, don't do it that way. He was leading people to the Lord, though. He was impressing people. They were coming to the Lord, but they were preaching the wrong stuff. He said, let us teach you. Some people need to be taught and be teachable. Don't be a know-it-all. 
I'm learning some things in the class because I'm teachable. I get messages when I go to the class. I got a message today when I went to the class. <sighs> Jehovah is the special name of God that links him with Israel and his covenant. And it is so sacred. Listen to me. It is so sacred to Jews. Even to this day, they will not speak it when they read scriptures in their synagogues. Instead, they substitute Jehovah for Adonai, which means master. They don't even say Jehovah. If you read your Bibles, if you have commentary, sometimes you'll see Y-M-H-W. They don't even put the vowels. Uh, I think I'm preaching to maybe a little a remnant right now. They don't even put the vowels in there because the name is so sacred and they don't want to say it. That's for another day. That's for another day. Jehovah is simply saying, you alone are true and the only God, the most high God. Turn to Psalms 83. I'm almost done. Psalms 83, verse 18. Psalms 83, verse 18. <laughs> that men may know that thou, whose name alone, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high high over all the earth. When I pray and I say Jehovah, I'm saying you are the most high God. You alone are God. There is no other God in my life. You are Jehovah. You are the covenant God. You are the almighty, all-knowing, powerful God, Jehovah. Salvation is found in the one and only God, Jehovah. Isaiah 12, 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is also my salvation. This brings us to another name for the Lord is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will be your Bible says. Hallelujah. But some people don't believe that God, the Lord Jehovah, will provide. They, they, they say, Lord, if you only can, no, I know you will. Because Jehovah is covenant. It's contractual. So if he says, I will provide, don't, 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 don't doubt that. Know that he will provide because his name, Jehovah, is contractual and he attached, I will provide with it. Jehovah will provide. Oh, I'm glad I got somebody giving me a hallelujah, the most highest praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Genesis 22, 14 says, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen, right there, it shall be seen, wherever it's at right now. <laughs> that monument, that memorial is there. And when you walk on it, they'll say, Abraham left this here. And what was Abraham saying? God will provide. Well, what did he provide? Oh, he provided a ram for his son because God told him to sacrifice his one and only son and he gave him a ram in the bush. That's why people say today, oh, I got a ram in the bush. <laughs> God will provide. And it's seen to this day. But some of you, not talking about you, but when I say some of you, and we need to get some more lost souls up in here so I can preach to them, have been provided for, but have forgotten where the memorial is. I don't forget where my memorials are. I know where every one of them are because God has provided for me at every one of those places including this one we're in now. And when we leave here, this will be a memorial. And we will say Jehovah Jireh reigned in this building. We're only here temporarily. 
Well, Pastor, if we want to move somewhere else and we hardly got any money in here, what are we going to do? God will provide. God provided a ram in the bush for Abraham in place of his one and only son, Isaac, whom God asked him to sacrifice. As we face the daily demands and trials of life, when situations appear to be hopeless, ask yourself, is anything too hard for the Lord Jehovah Jireh who provides? Ask that question. Whatever situation or circumstance you're in right now, whatever situation or circumstance you're facing right now, Jehovah Jireh will provide. There's nothing too, go too hard for the Lord. All caps can't do. <sighs> Abraham was at the right place and the right time for Jehovah Jireh to meet his needs. We have no right to expect the provisions of God if we are not in the will of God, if we're not in the right place at the right time. Those who trust, you know, Holy Spirit told us we were going to be out of the come center in Hialeah many, many years ago. We were in that place 20 years, but then he said, now you're going to be leaving. We had to step out in faith. We left. Y'all know this place is looking better than, but I, when I'm praying to God, I say, Lord, I'm grateful for the come center that we had a place to worship you in. And it had a lot of good versus where we're at now. <laughs> but I'm grateful for this place as well. Because God has a purpose. Amen? He always has a ram in the bush. And I don't care what you're going through, be in the will of God. Be in the will of God. You know if you're in the will of God. <laughs> you know if you're faking it to make it. But you know if you're truly in the will of God, you're doing exactly what God asked you to do. He said, take your son, and I'm going to take him from you. But he said, Abraham said, me and the boy, we're coming back. He said, though I slay him, I know my God could resurrect him. Somebody's going through something. I feel it in my spirit. It's just tugging at your heart right now. And God is telling you, be in the right place at the right time. Don't veer to the left nor the right, but stay on, stay, stay on the, the, the sweet and narrow. Those who trust the Lord and obey his instructions, Jehovah Jireh will make provisions. When we are doing the will of the Lord, we have the right to expect the provisions of Jehovah. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. I don't have privileges. Guess what I got? I got rights. That's what my God is telling me. He says contractual. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. I got privileges and I got rights. If the police arrest me, I got the right to remain silent. If I've done something wrong, I got a right to an attorney. And I have a right to be proven innocent until proven guilty. But I got a savior that's an advocate. His name is Jehovah. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. And he will provide what I need in the time that I need it. Because I got rights. I expect him to keep his promise. Do you have rights? Do you have rights? Jehovah Jireh provides for our every need to bring glory to his name. Hallowed be thy name is the first acknowledgement of Jehovah's awesomeness in the Lord's prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Man, when you pray, just pray that prayer. I was talking to Elder Ephraim, and he told me every time I pray, I pray the Lord's prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. But you hear people all the time, GD, oh, give a GD. Hmm. I remember Christians used to say, don't use the Lord's God's name in vain. They don't say nothing now. They listen to it in rap songs. 
They hear people say it and don't say nothing. And there's some Christians that be saying, it. you better leave me. I'm up. I don't give a. Jehovah Jireh is highly glorified when he meets the needs of those who seek him. When, when he blesses you, say, Jehovah Jireh, thank you. Because now you're glorifying his provisions for you. Oh. I'm going to preach it. Jehovah Jireh, his name means he is all about provisions for us. He says that. He says, That's what it's all about. I got to do this. People talk about, it, man, you can't afford a house in Florida. Yes, you can because you're a child of God. Step out in faith. You, you, you claimed it. You received it right there in the name of Jesus. My sister Mary, you received it. See, you got to connect with God. Some of you, 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 you want to be so cool, you know? Uh, so I, I'm watching some of you. Y'all be like. If I was sitting where you were sitting and the Holy Spirit was telling me, now say out my name. <sighs> say my name, Jehovah Jireh. You ain't got to say it loud. Just say it. Jehovah Jireh. Then God said, I'm going to give you exactly what you want. I'm going to give you that house. I'm going to give you that job. I'm going to give you that promotion. <laughs> I never knew I was going to retire. Two years, two years now have gone by. I've retired. And my wife continuously say, man, God's, God's so humorous. I told him, hey, you can get into the ministry, but I'm going to keep my job. And then he let you retire. Say, amen. Jehovah Jireh. God, God will provide. When we bring our needs to the Lord, Jehovah Jireh will meet our needs not a minute before and not a minute later. When we bring our request to the throne of grace, Jehovah Jireh answers with mercy and grace in our time of need. Every time. I've been praying for a healing. Healing took place. Almost embarrassing. Bunch of phlegm came up in my mouth. I said, oh, Jesus, don't embarrass me like this. I'm healing you. So I said, well, let me tell him you're healing me. Well, see, I know y'all. Y'all go back and say, y'all see that big old thing? And he tried to play it off. I seen it. <laughs> y'all ain't right. <laughs> How many of y'all seen it? Raise your hand. <laughs> no, 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 dude. <laughs> Cause now you're going to be looking. Ah, you're so good, Lord. Hebrews 4.16, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my banner. Another name we need to understand the meaning of and how to apply his name to our lives is Jehovah Nisi. Or Jehovah Nisi. This is a good one. Who knows what Jehovah Nisi means? Let me tell you, the Lord is my banner. Uh -huh. Jehovah Nisi is another name which explains who our God is. God's name says and means he is our victory. He is our banner. Wow, wow, wow. Turn to Exodus chapter 17, verse 10. Mm. Exodus chapter 17, verse 10. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amulek and Moses. Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a, then they took a stone and put it up under him and he sat there on, and Aaron and her stayed up, uh, stayed up his hands, uh, the one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua uh, uh, discomfited 
Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it. Uh, there you go. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the, the, the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Wow. Jehovah Nisi is another name which explains who our God is. God's name says he is our victory, he is our banner. Psalms 25 says we will rejoice in thy salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill any thy petitions. Joshua in the army of God fought the Amalekites as Moses has commanded. Jehovah Nisi gave them the victory. Let me tell you something. When armies go into battles, they carry a flag of their country. You know, they go into battle with that flag. And when they defeat that country, guess what they do? They stick their flag into that country's land and say, this country, this is our victory. This country belongs to us. When the Olympians come in for the Olympics, they come in with their flags. Each country has their flags and they march in. Everybody, they play in the music. They, they, all the pa pageantry and all their nice uniforms and they hold up their flags. And then there's an honor for somebody to carry the flag. They say, oh, it's an honor to carry the flag. And they carry the flag so proudly. But until they defeat an opponent in their specific event, they cannot raise that flag anymore until they get the victory. You have a first, second, and third, but first is always higher than everybody else's, and they play your national anthem. Oh, my God, my God, my God. It's a privilege. They, they're representing their country. They're claiming the victory. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, Moses didn't build a monument. Uh huh. Moses didn't build a monument for himself. Let me show you something. Likewise, when countries participate in the Olympics, during their ceremonies, they lift up their flags. We lift up our banners to show who we represent. Wow, okay, I'm going to get there. How do we lift up our banners, Pastor? Praise and worship is one way of lifting up your banner. See, when I come up here, I'm praising God, I'm listening to the songs, and I'm claiming my victories. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for my wife. Thank you, Lord, that you protected us when we were on the road. Thank you, Lord. Victories! How do we lift our banners? Praise and worship. Lifted hands are showing a celebration of victories we have in Christ Jesus. We come to this altar, to the parade, to cheer on Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who has given us the victory. When the, when the Miami Heat won the championship, it was about 300,000 people downtown. No portable bathrooms around. Can I preach to you? Wall to wall, people... Waiting on basketball players to come by and show their truth. Ten seconds. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, LeBron. And LeBron had it back to me. Hey, LeBron. You think LeBron turned around and said, hey, Fabian, we won. Then when it was over, I'm, I'm walking around. Y'all know what I'm looking for, right? But nobody wants to come to church and lift up the banners to Jehovah Nisi, the one that has given you and I the victories. Not victory, victories. Some athletes are in more than one competition. They had a swimmer. Man, that dude who's in everything, won seven gold medals. They lifted up the banner seven times because he represented the United States. Who do you represent? You show it in your praise and your honor. You lift up the banners. You say hallelujah. It's funny how we can go downtown. Yay, Miami Heat, we're number one. But we don't say that about Jehovah Nisi. You're number one. We'll scream out his name. You're awesome, y'all. I seen when they were playing basketball last night. Those crowds are going crazy. But we don't go crazy for Jehovah Nisi. Ugh. 
We had a visitor to come here today. Um, they had to leave, but they didn't leave because they didn't like it. They said, we felt it. And when I hugged the gentleman, he was soaking wet from praising God. I said, this brother, he said, well, we felt it. His wife said the same thing. So I know some of you want to, you don't want to sweat. You got your makeup on. Your lashes, you don't want them to, you want to make sure that glue stick. I understand. Yeah, I was thinking about getting some, some eyebrows. I'm losing my eyebrows. She said, don't you dare. <laughs> and I'm not seen on Instagram. You know, she always showed me stuff. These, these brothers, man, they have a head like me, no hair at all. And they, they put some thing on their head. Next thing you know, they got a head full of hair. That thing look real. I said, she said, you can't do it. It's too late. <laughs> I used to have a lot of hair. But even if I got that, I wouldn't be worried about that thing falling off. Y'all just going to have to pick it up and <laughs> put, it, put it in my bag and say, this pastor, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, we know. Because <laughs> he didn't grow that hair overnight. <laughs> and y'all be all right if I got some hair like that? Y'all yeah, all right. <laughs> they talking about, nah. <laughs> Oh, my God. But hey, that's good. Jehovah Nisi giving me the hair. So how can the victorious believers in Christ lift up their banners? Lift up holy hands unto the Lord and thank him for the victories. Live a life pleasing to God so that everyone can see your good works because of the victory the Lord has given you. When the Lord is your banner and you know you need no other gods, you can be assured of a peace that surpasses all understanding and that through Christ you are truly victorious. <laughs> Oh, can I preach to the Holy Spirit? See, when you go to events and they say, all oh, stand, pledge allegiance to the flag. And you, you know what? You're supposed to look for the flag and face the flag. But some people be like, that ain't my country. My flag, red, black, and green. And you don't even know the national black anthem. They'll put that up. and But you... <laughs> I'm not a citizen of the United States, but I, I get right up there. I look at that flag. I take my hat off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible for which it stands. Amen. I had to put God in that. Some of y'all say, you don't even know what I mean. You don't either. <laughs> and some of y'all know y'all don't know the Star Spangled Banner. Because every time somebody sings the Star Spangled Band, I'd be listening to see if they're going to make them say, that's a hard song to sing. When the Lord is your banner, you know you need no other God. You can be assured of the peace. And that brings us to our last point. Je Jehovah Shalom. Turn to Judges chapter 6, verse 24. Judges chapter 6, verse 24. Amen. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, it is yet an Oprah of the Eberezerites. Gideon was called to lead Israel into battle. Gideon started as someone of a, of a coward but became a conqueror and later ended his career as a compromiser. Holy Spirit gave me a message on that. Co coward, conqueror, Compromiser. <laughs> Coward, conqueror, compromiser. Three C's. That's a lot of believers today. Scared of everything in the beginning. Then you come to Christ and be a, start becoming a conqueror, having these victories. Then later you start compromising, straddling the fence. That's another message. Gideon is the only judge whose personal struggles with his faith are recorded. Gideon is great encouragement to people who have a hard time accepting themselves and believing that God can make anything out of them or do anything with them. 
Gideon asked for a sign to assure him that it was really the Lord who was speaking to him, and the Lord was gracious to accommodate Gideon's unbelief. God had to give Gideon a message of peace to prepare him for fighting a war. And unless we're at peace with God, we cannot face the enemy with confidence and fight the Lord's battles. I'm at peace with God. That's why I can come up against any devil that comes my way in the name of Jesus. As we have seen throughout the message, it was customary for the Jews to identify special events and places by putting up monuments. So Gideon built an altar and called it the Lord of Peace. The Hebrew word peace is salom, which means an end to hostilities, but carries the idea of being well, being well and prosperous. Tell the truth, when your bills are paid, you're at what? That's why he takes care. See, y'all take that peace to, to a smaller level. When you understand what that peace really means, that is prosperity, when your bills are taken care of, when you don't have to worry about things, when you got insurance, when, when, when you can pay your, uh, 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 buy food, buy clothes, pay your car note, put gas in your car and fill it up, not just be hitting the hit three, $10 today, $10 tomorrow. Can't go nowhere because I ain't got no gas. Hey, why don't you come up to the house? I ain't got no gas. You going to bring me some gas? But when you're able to take care of those things, you have what? Peace. You sleep at night. Oh, my God is so good. My God is so good. The Hebrew word, you got to remember, is shalom. Jehovah shalom, the God of peace. Jehovah means what? Jehovah means what? Say it again. God's covenant. It's contractual. Because he connects it with everything else. The Lord, all caps, contractual. I will give you peace. It's my promise. I can't renege on that. I will supply all your needs. I can't renege on that. It's contractual. Don't miss that. <laughs> the devil will be messing with me. You better preach your heart out because if any time they leave, what are you going to do? You got a year's lease here. And then you got to pay a lot of money. God always provides. Y'all never had to buy a barbecue, sell a barbecue sandwich? Y'all never, I never told the bakers in here, bake some cakes so that we can, so that we can sell them and, and pay our rent. I've never told you that, ha have I? Because why? If Holy Spirit's telling you that, he says, I'll provide for you personally. You got to believe that. So I'm transparent. God provides. God knew all my life I wanted to drive. My favorite car was a Mercedes. One day my wife woke up. She's going to get on my case for this because she's going to say, you're always telling our business. But no. Jehovah Jireh. So she woke up one morning and said, what kind of car are you like? Because, you know, I had a car. I was leasing it. I said, um, no, I had a car. It was a Cooper, a Mini Cooper, a little midget car like me. So anyway... I, everybody used to say, yeah, that, fit, that car fits you. I say, why fit me? Anyway, I drive my Mini Cooper, Mini, Mini Cooper, and she said, what kind of car are you like? So I seen on the commercials, the Buicks, I seen a bunch of preachers driving Buicks, so I said, a Buick? She said, a Buick, is that the new preacher car? I said, well, you know, you just asked me, I like them, I see them on the commercial. She said, but you said you always wanted a Mercedes. And when she took me to the Mercedes dealership, I've got a Mercedes. Jehovah Jireh. Amen. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you step out in faith. Understand the characteristics of God's names. Don't just be saying them. Some people just say it just because it sounds good in their prayer and make you look like you can really know what you're praying. Jehovah Nisa, Jehovah Jireh, Lord, 
And don't even know what you're talking about. Leave out of here saying, man, I hope the Lord bless me, provide that. See, some of you wondering about your income taxes. Don't worry about that. God will bless. For many, many years, I had to pay a lot of money back. Till one year when I, when I didn't have to pay the money back and the, and, the, and the accountant told me how much money I was getting, I said, what did you say? Because I, I paid so much all the time that I would wait two, two tax periods before I even turned it over because I know I had to pay back. I wasn't in no hurry. So when she told me, I said, I think she made a mistake. I said, how much? She told me again. I said, that's a lot of money. So I came home to my wife. I said, how much money we going to get? She said, praise God. She's a cool one. Praise God. So, you know, how I am, I told them, she gave it to me, and I mailed it. Weeks and weeks and weeks went by. I didn't get no check. So now you know the devil messing with me like, they were wrong. <laughs> you probably owe. So I called the people, and I said, <sighs> first I called the, and I'm going to end with this because God's going to bless you. I, 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 I tried to call them. You can't get through. Went on the internet, and they said pending. At least they'll tell you that. I said pending. It's been like six, seven weeks. So I called the accountant, and they said, well, we usually, everybody else usually do it electronical. But because I was doing it with the mailing because I wasn't in no hurry, so I said, well, can you do mine? She said, maybe we can try it. So y'all know, immediately I said, Lord, let it go through. She said, I'll call you if it goes through. I ran in my car. I said, Lord, let that go through. She said, Mr. Walker, got good news for you. It went through. She said, it'll be in your account in a few days. And they sent it to my wife's account. So I still didn't get no money. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but I just trust God. That's all I'm telling you. Some of you going through some stuff, man. Trust God. Know who the Lord is and understand what his name really means. Now, God says, I got something good for you. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, are calling those who need this afternoon to come to his altar to receive a need you have and that he wants to fulfill for you today in a few minutes Jehovah Jireh wants you to come Jehovah Nisi is our banner lift up the Lord our banner with lifted hands and shouts of joy because he has given you the victory Jehovah Shalom is our peace when the victory is won, there is peace within our souls. So what Holy Spirit is saying, first of all, when you come to the altar, come with what you said you need. Don't come with nothing, oh, I know God can bless me with this. Come with something that you want to put God to the test. Something big. Now, if it's in God's will for you to hit the million, don't be, don't, don't, don't renege on your vow. Because people will say, Lord, listen, Lord, if you let me hit a scratch off, or you give me millions of dollars, I'll buy New Ark Covenant Church a church. Soon as God, God knows if you for real, because if he knows you for real, you're going to get it. But if you faking, you ain't going to get that. So don't pray that prayer if you don't mean it. Because the Bible says if you vow a vow, it's better to vow, it's better not to vow a vow than to vow a vow and not keep it. So you say you're gonna do something, do it. But whatever you ask God to come up here for, a big need, nothing teeny. Pray that it's in God's will and it will be done for you. Now some of you probably saying, uh, man, come with faith. Come with faith. We're gonna play a song. Not gonna lay hands on nobody, you're just gonna come to this altar. Ask for what you need. And after what you ask for you need, here's the key. Believe it. If you believe it, that means you got it, right? You got the victory. So if you got the victory, what should you do? According to the message. 
All right, let me back up. Jehovah, oh, there you go. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah is the covenant God, contractual. Jehovah Nisi says, I will provide. So you come up, you already know it's contractual. Listen, I don't want to mess you up. You already know it's contractual. So he's saying, if you come up here, I got to, my, the Lord, Jehovah, got to keep his promise. So once you come up here, Jehovah Jireh will give you what you asked for. Y'all got it so far? That's number two, right? Number three, Jehovah Nisi. He says, once you come up here, it's contractual. Once you get the victory, you should do what? Praise him. Lift up the banner. Show him we got the victory. Oh, oh, oh. Uh-huh. And then shalom means what? Then you have the confidence to know that you got it, and you can walk out of here knowing that you got exactly what God told you. I got something I'm going to be asking God for. And I'm going to walk out. I'm going to do exactly what he says. I'm going to remember his contractual. I'm going to say his name. I'm going to get what he, I'm going to let him know what I want because he's going to provide it. I'm going to plant the banner and I'm going to leave out of here with peace. Those are four steps. Some of you are going to get all mixed up. Oh, man, you're going to stick the banner in first. You're going to be, uh, you just, just listen to the, remember the word. I pray, I'm praying for, I'm not going to tell y'all what I'm praying for because I don't want y'all to get messed up and go in that direction. Whatever God tells you to, to pray for, pray for. I don't, he don't care what it is. He knows what your need is. I'm not going to lay hands on nobody. You're just going to, we're going to play a song. Get in there with Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, when, it, when, when I watch those people stand on those podiums in the Olympics, and the other guy's here, and the other guy's way down there, and he's standing up there proud while his flag is being lifted up. I'm proud of what God is doing in my life and proud of what he's doing in the New Art Covenant church life. So I don't know about you guys, but a lot of you didn't know about the names and the characteristic of Jehovah. You didn't know how to apply it to your life. Today you know how. Amen? We're going to play one song. Let's dim the lights. Amen, sister. No, no, no. Give it to me. Amen. In the name of Jesus.